Hello everybody. I think we're probably live on YouTube talk to you today. Um, my name is Mary and I'm from Love Crafts and I would like to introduce you to Katie from The Queen Stitch. Hello Katie. Hello. <laughs> Hello. We are so excited because um, today we're going to have a little chat with Katie about her new collection for Paintbox which is amazing and we've got a little bit of a, a treat for you a live tutorial about joining granny squares in fact join as you go granny squares but we'll get to that so katie how are you ah oh, fabulous it's a friday afternoon start of the weekend looking forward to it <laughs> fantastic well we are we're super excited about this having a chat I think this is the first time we've gone live on YouTube actually which is super exciting for us um well for me actually um and so let's have a look should we start off by having a look at this fantastic collection now, the collection is called the Sonora collection and we'll talk about that in a minute and it's a I mean it's a just the most gorgeous summery easy to wear fantastic crocheted collection for paint box isn't it Oh, well, thank you. I, I'd like to agree. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, so let's just, let's run through these pieces because they're so cool. Um, so I let's go with the biggest thing first. So the tassel dress, the Riyadh tassel dress, it's a fantastic, it's quite sheer. It's quite lovely dress in cotton DK, paintbox cotton DK. How, what was the inspiration behind this one? So for that one, um, the word Riyadh is uh, Arabic for basically um, a courtyard house that is usually converted into a hotel. So Ooh. I stayed in one of those, yeah, in Marrakesh. I was so fortunate to be able to go um, about five years ago now. Um, and so they have a very heavy influence on tile work, geometric designs. And so I tried to play into that repeating geometry in the summary-ishness of the dress. So, you know, as you mentioned, it's a little sheer, so you can wear it with a slip, you can wear it with a bathing suit, you can wear it with nothing underneath if you're just feeling yourself that day. So, <laughs> you <have to. laughs> I love it. And I love the tassels. Tassels are, I mean, they're, they're gorgeous, aren't they? They just add something. I don't know what it is. It's, so, it's almost like it's a, it's like party feel or festival feel or. Yeah, just a little bit of extra movement, right? Like yeah. a little something to catch your eye at the end. <laughs> so if you did, so if you did decide that you wanted to wear this, say for example, if you were off to festival and you had a little dance, just a little mm -hmm. bit more extra jiggle there in the yeah, air. Right? <laughs> <Sure. laughs> it's absolutely gorgeous. I love it. And then if you wanted to carry something with you to carry your bits and bobs in, the mm -hmm. Twilight Clutch Bag. Now, this is very lovely. Um, is this one also sort of based on tiles and this one is actually based uh, very specifically on the sunset so what Ooh. i wanted to capture was the sun setting in the horizon so you have those lines of red but then when the stars come out and it's really when your night gets started and you're switching making that transition so <laughs> that was the inspiration for the motif behind uh that twilight stars clutch oh i love it i've just i've got it i've got it here and do you know what i love on the bottom of it i love the little pom-poms um like you know we have a little pom-pom with a bit of a little bit of a chain in between that's mm -hmm. just another kind of really gorgeous way of, of adding a bit of a, a decorative thing and a bit of movement i love that yeah i was really pleased when i learned how to do the bomb the pom-pom the pom -pom tassel fringe with crochet because you know Yes, it's fun to cut up lots of ends, use your scraps for pom-poms, but this is just a much simpler, less messy way to make pom-poms, in my opinion. Yeah, I'd absolutely love it. It's that kind of, kind of like a bubble stitch. Yeah, so you're basically yeah. doing a bobble slash cluster like on both sides and slip stitching it on the top and bottom before you're chaining on to the next. Oh, I love it. That's divine. That's divine. <laughs> now, there are two other supersonically exciting garments um the shoulders in the sun top and the daytona top uh, there are four aren't there four in the in the collection or yes there are five there's one more the 4 a.m bralette as well yeah um but the shoulders in the sun top uh is real i mean i love the fact that you know you use granny squares a little bit or sort of a granny square type of thing in that clutch bag but this is 
a beautiful use of granny squares built into a top with your shoulders in the sun. Have you got, have you got one there? I Did have, yeah. So this is one that I made just using some of the leftovers from another garment that I made. But you can see that um, really at the end of the day, it's just granny squares. It's just done in sort of an off the shoulder, adjustable, fun top. It's obviously got that heavy 70s influence, but yeah. most of us don't do. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that was such a great thing about the 70s, granny squares. That's, you know, they were really born in the 70s, weren't they? So it does, and it sort of just brings that sort of feeling of freedom. And I don't know, it's just the whole collection is, you know, really sort of free and easy to wear and summery and warm. And obviously it's going to really appeal to younger crocheters. Yeah, that is the hope. And, you know, it's interesting because that 70s, a lot of the inspiration for the collection came from 70s concert posters and sort of this mm -hmm. wildflowers desert, you know, architecture, all of these things that I thought are sort of like this nostalgia aspect. So I didn't directly tackle that, but I wanted that to be the overall the vibe. And so that's why it's called the Sonora Collection, isn't it? That's the, it's the desert flower um, called it's the a, Sonora a, a Mexican desert, yeah. Mexican desert, I love it. Um, so the other thing that has granny squares in it, slightly different granny squares, is the Daytona top. And um, I'm particularly excited. So next month, in the month of August, we are running the uh, Lovecrafts Festival, which is a month long celebration of crafting and crochet, knitting, sewing, stitching, paper crafts, all sorts of things. And one of the feature highlights of the festival is that you're going to be making the Daytona top along with anybody who wants to join in with you. Yeah. I mean, that is so exciting. Now, this top, so I will get, um, we'll put the link to the festival uh, and all the festival exciting news into um, the show notes and into the bottom of the, the comments underneath it on YouTube. But we'll also put links to the patterns. And if you can have a look in there, you'll see the Daytona top. I mean, it's just, it's perfect for any age, anybody to wear. Um, and I think it's just it's super cool and really pretty and it's based around, it's got some granny squares to build it together, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So the, it's called the Datura bloom top because it's supposed to capture that blooming of the flower. Sorry. No, 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 I don't actually know how to pronounce it either. So we'll find out. But um, it, I, the granny square that we use is a triple puff granny square. So I thought it looked like a blooming flower. And oh. you're right, it is, it is meant to be one of the most, fun I think it's the most functional design in the collection because you can wear it because it's dressy, it's lacy, you can wear it over a dress with a skirt, or you can just throw it over a bathing suit, you can wear it with jeans, because it is still a cotton top. So I think it's pretty versatile in terms of when and wherever you want to wear it. Yeah, that's the thing that it, I mean, I think uh, as an older crochet myself, that's the sort of thing from your collection, I think, oh, I'd wear that, that's beautiful. And yet I know that my daughter and my nieces and you know, would all wear that as well, that they would think that was super funky. And even though there's, you know, in their twenties or sort of teens. So I think it's the sort of thing that you could make for yourself, but it's also mm. the perfect thing to make as a gift. So if you have anybody who has a birthday in August and September, or any part of the year, actually, or if you're in the other side of the world, if you're over in our lovely New Zealand, Australian territories that are there, you can also make it for the summer, which would be wonderful. So, um, you know, you can make it in the winter, especially for presents for the summer. So oh, let's have a, a think, how is, what, how is it constructed? So I'm really waffling now because I'm a bit overexcited, but how is it constructed, this top? The Detour Bloom top? Yeah. So it's very modular. So essentially there are three motifs that are actually quite common to crochet. So we have um, the granny square motif. We have um, a common lace, which is on the front and back panel. And then on the side, it's just easy fillet crochet, which is in US terminology, just double crochet in a chain or in UK terminology, the triple crochet in a chain, or treble crochet. Um, and so once you've done those three modules, you basically, um, stitch them together to have sort of a crop tank top. And then you add the bell sleeves and the ruffle at the waist with just, um, yeah. So it's actually quite easy. It looks, I think, pretty complex for how easy the stages are. 
it does. I mean, it, it does. I was just going to say, where would you pitch it? Would you say it would be like a, a, a sort of adventurous beginner, intermediate, or? I would say adventurous beginner or intermediate. Yeah, because when you break it down, you only use double crochet, single crochet, and chain. Yeah. That's <laughs> so actually, um, and the fact that we're sort of going to make along, even if you're a beginner crocheter, don't be put off because this is something that you could, you know, you probably really enjoy making and it could be your first garment. Um, as, long as, you can, as long as you can do those stitches, you're fine. Yeah, and um, again, there'll be video tutorials every week. The first one starting on the Paintbox Yarns Instagram um, at one hour later than this time. Um, starting August 3rd, which will be our first one to make the granny squares, but there'll be video support the entire time as well. So if you're a visual learner like me, it just makes it a lot easier to not have to look at the words and be like, what does this mean? <laughs> and also, I think as well, that really, really helps if you're not used to reading patterns. So a lot of crocheters don't read patterns. And so I think this actually would help greatly because then you'll, you'll be able to um, follow along with the videos. That's very exciting. Well, I, I now what is it made in? Um, it's it's paint box cotton DK. It is. It is. Um, if in some territories there may not be all the colours of paint box DK at the moment, paint box cotton DK, because obviously with COVID, the mills are still catching up with all the orders. Um, so what um, what would what alternatives could we use if we if we don't have the colour that we want? Yeah, absolutely. So this garment actually lends itself really well to scraps and you can have multiple colors within the granny squares. So don't be afraid to use what you have. But um, if you are looking to grab more yarn, uh, we also have Style Craft and yes. Rico Essentials, both of which I think are available on Love Crafts as well. Yep, they are. They're lovely. Now, Katie, I think you slightly uh, need to just tap your phone again to just to refocus that camera. So we're ready to have a look. Um, is that working? It's that you need a little bit more focus there. Don't know what's because it will let's just, what, should, we, should we have a look at that? Oh hi. <laughs> <That's better. laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh the loveliness of working on live YouTube, everybody, isn't it great? Um so I think um yeah, so we could use like a Starcraft cotton or Rico's Essentials. Uh, cotton if you um if you can't get the paint box color you like but obviously the paint box colors are completely gorgeous so hopefully you will get the colors that you like um you've made your top in the photographs uh, in the pattern in the a lovely sort of ivory color haven't you in a or paper white maybe even or a vanilla cream it is champagne white specifically yes <laughs> I, I could go through all the paint box colors i know them all um yeah champagne white very nice but I think if I was making it for me, I might even be very tempted to do it in like dark aubergine or maybe the khaki sort of mossy green, I suspect. Mm. Only yeah, absolutely. If... I've been experimenting with having those granny squares that look like the blooming flowers, actually colors of flowers. So the one I'm mm. gonna be doing for the make along in our storyboard session last week, looks like I think a red peony with the green leaves surrounded by blue. Oh, gorgeous. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so to help you, um, to help everybody, uh, we're going to do um, a live tutorial now about how to join granny squares. Now this, you could use it for the shoulders in the sun top, or you could just use it for any old blanket that you're making. Any, any, any time you want to join a granny square, is that right? That's totally correct. And I'm probably joining granny squares 50% of my time, if I have to be honest. So this is coming really useful for me. Um, oh, and really, I have to, I've got two mm -hmm. granny squares ready, so I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to I'm going to do it as you show us how to do it. Excellent. Yeah, and I'm hopefully going to cover two different um, styles of join as you go granny squares. One for when you're using the same color around all of the squares, and then one if you're mismatching your colors using up those scraps. <gasps> Fantastic. Well, well, we're ready when you are. I'd love to see. All right. Let's see if this works with my live bendable video. So we're gonna go down here and then I'm gonna swing you around. Uh -huh. Is this right? 
Yeah. yeah, that looks perfect. That looks great. Yeah, I can see you. That's good. Now, oh, here we go. Let's see. So when I'm planning out my granny squares, before connection, obviously, you'll want them done until the second to last round. So here I have two rounds of a granny square and I'm gonna have three. I have right, but yep. Yeah. yeah, so I've laid them out in the order that I want and the materials that I'm using are that champagne white paint box DK again, but you can use whatever. I have a three millimeter crochet hook. Usually when using DK, I alternate between 3.5 and four millimeter, though I am quite a loose crocheter. So you may wanna go um, with a smaller size if you'd like. And then I have my trusty scissors. Lovely stalk scissors. <laughs> right? I actually really like um, scissors that are animals. So I also have a fish and a bunny. <laughs> oh, very nice. <clears throat> we all need our, our hobbies, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. So this first um, version of Join As You Go Granny Squares is when you have the same color all around every square. The second type of granny square joining um, works for if you have the same color or if you're using different colors. So for the first one, I'm gonna just change this to this view. Can you guys still see this? Should yeah. I move it up? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this will be my end square that's attaching here. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go around side one, attach on side two, and then go up three. And instead of going around that fourth side, we're gonna go back to one on the next square. Oh, okay. So, yeah, so hopefully that's not too confusing, but I'm about to show you what I mean. So let me know if I'm outside of this viewer. Yeah, I can see you, that's perfect. I can see you now. Ah, so, you're gonna tie onto your hook into the corner of the granny square that you're starting with. And I usually chain three to start when I'm going across as a granny square. So then I'm gonna wrap my yarn, insert. So I have three loops, pull through two, pull through two. So that's a double crochet in UK in US terminology and a treble crochet in UK terminology. Yep. So hopefully this isn't a surprise to anyone who's done a granny square before, but we're gonna do three of these double crochets in each space. Until we get to that corner there. Mm -mm -mm. And so on connection corners, normally I think most people know when you're doing a square corner, you chain two and continue along. Yep. But when I'm connecting, I just chain one, take my connection and I insert my hook into that other square, pull through and pull through again to make a slip stitch. I was gonna say sort of like, so slip stitch it into the corner there, yep. Yes, exactly. And then I chain another one. So technically it's three, but we're doing chain one, slip stitch, chain one. And then we'll do our three double crochet into the corner of our working granny square. And then to connect in our next gap, we're gonna slip stitch again. So if I set this down, I've just got granny squares everywhere, huh? If I set this down, we've connected in two places so far. Yeah. And then I'm going to do another three double crochet. I'm going to do another slip stitch. And then I'm going to do another three double crochet. Who's that? <laughs> and then I'm going to slip stitch. Sorry, I'm going to chain one, slip stitch, chain one again. Yep. And then I'm going to go up that third side. Okay, so, so it's connected by those, that's three slip stitches or four slip stitches holding that really firm on. Yep, got it. Correct, yep, exactly. And so then 
I like to, if you can see this, catch my ends as I go. I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of weaving. So the more stitches I can get in between, the better. <laughs> yeah. So then we're just going to finish this third side and then the magic happens. So I'm at the end of my third side here. And normally you'd go across and finish. Yeah. But because I'm using the same color around each granny square, I'm actually, I wanted this one. I'm going to do the same three sides again, leaving the top unfinished. Ooh. Right? Yeah. Basically, what we're going to do is go one, two, three, one, two, three, all along the row. And then we're going to finish the top all at once. Oh, nice. Yeah, I can see it now. I mean, and that's that's pretty secure, isn't it? To, to them being held on by a slip stitch there. I yeah. think so. And when we have the second square, it's actually going to be held on on two sides. So you'll yeah. have even more support and even less ends, which as you can see by me weaving in my ends already that I am <laughs> not a big fan of. That is the, the one sort of drawback of sort of classic granny squares, isn't it? There are so many ends especially if you're changing color yes yeah and so this is obviously a pretty good scrap buster because i have the two colors um on the inside and like you mentioned before this can be used for blankets it can be used for pillows it can be used for dresses it can be used for the shoulders in the sun top available for free on lovecrafts.com right now <laughs> yes actually <laughs> i forgot to tell you everybody that the paint box patterns are always free so this beautiful collection from katie's it, are there free patterns to download? We'll put some links into the comments so you'll be able to um, to download them. And I really suggest you do because they're completely gorgeous. Well, there we are. So you come down that second side. Yes. So basically, instead of starting by tying on, you essentially just start immediately with your double crochets. So there were three double crochets here, slip stitch, three double crochets here slip stitch, three double crochets. So now that we're at this corner, right. we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna slip stitch in the first square. We're gonna slip stitch in that, I guess we could call that the fourth square. And then we're gonna chain one. So here we are connected to both corners, ready to start our second side on that second granny square. That's good. And it also gives you, it's pretty, isn't it? It's a pretty join, especially if you want something to lie really, really flat, because sometimes, and I would imagine that's why it works so well for garments, because you have that, if you do sort of join grannies in a traditional way, sometimes you end up with a bit of a tram line uh, or certainly a weighty kind of join that stops them hanging, you know, really draping well. Yeah, the seams, I think, are a big issue, especially on garments, and they can hang heavier and sort of ruin the drape. Um, yeah. So when it's trying to lie flat, I totally agree with you that the this is a really good joint to know. Um, and as well, I think it looks really nice on the back as well. So yeah, that's very nice the, on the back. The yeah. And that's also... I mean, that does help with the drape, but also it's more comfortable to wear rather than having a great big seam. Yes. Also with blankets, I mean, you know, beggars can't be choosers. If you're making a beautiful crochet afghan for someone, I'm sure that they're not going to come back to you and say, mm, the seam is really uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> but you also but it lies flatter on the body. And also that I think when there's no big scene, there's also not no lumps and bumps where you had to sew all the ends in because that's another uh, adds more weight. See, that looks so pretty where the four squares join in the middle. That looks really pretty. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to do one more in this join way, um, in this type of join. And then I'll go across the top to show you what to do with sort of these open pieces. Okay. And then I'll show you the second version of join as you go. But also as we're continuing, let me know if there are any questions from the audience or if I'm going a little bit too quickly. So you can see that I just did that first join onto the new square with just a standard double crochet, no chains or anything. Let's grab that end. Yes. 
So let's see if there are any questions. Ah, okay. So if we get any questions coming up, I'll let you know, Katie, as we go along. Hey, perfect. Hopefully everyone thinks this is crystal clear and it's blowing their granny square minds right now. <laughs> it's blown my mind. That's for sure. And actually, now that I think about it, I've, I've seen you, all. Well, I've heard you talk about this before um, in that lovely shopper bag that we did. And uh, again, that was a, another way. I mean, it's great for bags as well, isn't it? Granny squares are great for bags. I, yeah, I honestly don't think I could be a bigger fan of granny squares because yes, they're, you know, a staple of the seventies, but there are so many ways and so many new modern takes on granny squares that they're, I think, what is crochet without a granny square, basically? Well, absolutely. And, you know, the thing is that people love them so much that we're still making them and we're still finding a million different ways to make a granny square and inventing all kinds of different stitch designs. So, I mean, that just shows you how much we love that classic. Absolutely. I saw one, I think it was Pony McTate. She had done an entire under the sea granny square blanket where each different granny square was a sea creature it was oh, amazing she's a very she's a very clever lady is pony mctate all right so we're almost there and i have to say that this last row is by far the most satisfying yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man. so i'll lay this flat to show you where we're at so we have these three squares and the final, this is when, so I'm leaving this space here to show you another method, but generally you would go all the way down to yeah. the end of your piece and then go across. Yep. So at this part, we're gonna chain two like we would at a normal corner. And then we're going to do three double crochet. So this part is, you know, normal. No surprises, I don't think. Mm-hmm. And we're going across. So just the general, all the way across as a normal granny. Yeah, exactly, right until the corner. So then so, we did the first half of the corner there. Yep, and then we chain one, and then we slip stitch into this gap to okay. make our corner. Uh -huh. So that is the first one done. Yeah, that looks so neat. So then we chain one again and three double crochet into the corner and go across like normal if I can get my crochet hook in order. And like I mentioned before, this just, I think, even though it takes way longer, um, in terms of one motion, because you know you get the immediate satisfaction by doing the rounds of the granny squared as you go. Yeah. But this one, you know, you get everything. It's seamless. There's no end to weave in at the end. You're capturing them as you go along. Just nice and neat. And then if you, like me, really are against the ends. We can just capture that first one in this corner here with the one, two, three, then the chain two. Then we slip stitch to close, snip it. And then if we snip that, you can't even see that end that I wove in. So this is the only end that you have to worry about at the end there. Oh, well, that's fantastic. That's beautiful. That's really, really lovely. I've just got to say, we've got a couple of comments coming up. So Katie, um, from uh, a lady called from By Sunset Creations wants to know if you've got your own YouTube channel. Oh, I do not. Um, this is actually only my son. Oh, a little bit of frozen there. That's okay. <laughs> As I struggle. Um, so it's not something that I have at the moment, but I wouldn't be against it in the future. I have done several um, actually edited videos for Love Crafts in the past. So um, I believe there was a bag, there's a free halter pattern and a few other things um, 
through the Lovecraft's channel as well. That's true. And actually, um, if we need to see how you join those those uh, squared together again, I think that it is actually in the other bag tutorial. So we'll put a link to that, uh, also to that uh, video for people to see. Um, wow, and Yvonne, she says she loves paintbox yarns. Beautiful colours, amazing quality. I'm so delighted with my recent purchases. Well, we love that, Yvonne, because we love paint box as well. So that's I brilliant. I think what we could do, Katie, is we could um, we could at some point do a, food, a photo tutorial or just sort of write down the steps of exactly how we join these squares together. So uh, to sort of just add to a resource that other people could have a look at. So we might Absolutely. do that, yeah, it'd be really good. So that's your one way of joining the granny squares. What's your yeah. second way of joining granny squares? So the second way is actually what I used in the shoulders and the sun top. So oh, you'll yeah. notice that in this top, the outside of the squares are all different colors. So I wasn't yeah. able to do that sort of one and done method of joining. So this one, that I'm about to show you is really useful when using scraps, when you're playing yarn chicken, this, that, and the other, you're not really sure how you're gonna finish it. So I'm gonna tilt my camera down again, and you'll let me know if you guys can see this. Writing the struggle bus. Right. Can you see this? Yep, we can see that, that's absolutely fine. Okay, so this one, long game. So you need all of the same uh, tools, but this one um, is basically joining one square at a time. So in this one, we do just go around all four sides and then link. Mm -hmm. And so if I was going to start this, it starts the exact same way um, as the other ones. Though, to be honest, you can also start on this side and go around like that. I'm not a stickler for process in this. So I'll do that though, just to show you how that would work. Okay. So I'll start on my empty side here with chaining one, two, three. And then my two double crochet to create that first granny cluster. Yep. Then I'll do the second and third to take me to the corner. And if anybody needs um, a video of actually how to make a granny square from scratch, we've got that too. So we'll also give you a link to that in the comments. So we're coming up to the second corner now. Yes. So we'll chain one, slip stitch to connect, and then chain one again. And so now it's firmly adhered over there. And we'll yep. do our three double crochets. So you kind of, you're kind of working your way round the granny square at the same time as just slip stitching to catch it on each point of contact along the way. That's absolutely correct. And I'll give you a little hint as well, or maybe a cheat code, that this type of joining works on any granny square um, edge. So even if you're not doing granny square clusters, if you're just doing um, double crochets all all along the top, sort of matching them up rather than in clusters, you can still do a sort of random slip stitch wherever you want, preferably at equal intervals, but it still works to connect your squares. So you don't have to just do this for traditional granny clusters. You can use it with anything. And actually, that's just another great way to, to add drape if it, is, if it is something where you're adding garment parts together or sleeves on or you know all sorts of things like that yep that's totally true so we join it in the two sides the same way as before so we do the one slip stitch the second slip stitch and then the one chain so we're all the way around now to the third side and now we're going to connect it again Okay, so the second half, second half of the corner there. And then, so once you've done the second half of the corner, so you then connect into the middle and then do the middle space chains, uh, stitches. Yeah, so when you're connecting in a group of four, 
you want to slip to number one and number four if we're going one, two, three, four. Right. Basically, the ones right next to it, you don't have to worry about catching that guy because he's already solidly into the uh, squares that are next to him. Okay. I don't know why that one granny square is a dude, but apparently he is. <laughs> <laughs> All granny squares are dudes, really. Well, <laughs> dude grannies. Dude grannies. So then we're just gonna finish our square by turning down the last row. Mm -hmm. And also I guess this is where you'd be if you were right at the end of the row. Um, so this is just one square, but if you're right at the end, this is be your last one too. Absolutely, yep. And what's, and so then you just do your normal chain two and then I do a, at least one or two chains and then I cut to tie off. But you can see that it looks exactly the same. Like you, I don't think it's distinguishable that I did this one once and these three together. No, absolutely, you can't see, can you? Um, I mean, and that's really, really clever. So uh, it just gives you a very neat, very clean join with no bunchiness. Um, and actually what I like about it is that it gives you in between the four granny squares together, that point where the four join, uh, it's extremely pretty. It looks like you've got another little flower in here. And sometimes that little bit can get lost if you've got a chunky join. Yeah, sorry, my little bungee is losing his stretch. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and it's, I think, as someone who flies by designing a little bit by the seat of her pants, I like this way of joining because if I wanted to add eight more pieces to the end of this, I could just do the same thing and it would look exactly the same. So I don't get, you know, in trouble for adding on extra bits <laughs> if I decide it's going to look better or fit oh, better. Usually. Definitely. So, oh, Yvonne, Yvonne, hello, Yvonne. She says to us, the join as you go method makes granny so much less daunting as a project. It really does, Yvonne. It really, really does. I think um, it, it just means that you're doing it in one, one go, that last round, all in one go. So you haven't got that terrifying pile of granny squares that you know you're going to have to stitch you know so you know that thing where you're making a big blanket and you have to lie all your squares out and remember exactly where they were so that you put them all together oh, that, oh terrifying have we got another comment here here we go so sunset creations this is diana she says hello diana let's just see what she says there she says i know she says i've created i've crocheted granny squares before and then I don't want to join them, so they end up sitting there. Well, I think that's something we've all done. Let's be honest, Diana. When we crocheted a wonderful blanket, you do all the work, and then you think, oh, I can't face sewing them up. And I am the same way, Diana. So I have a literal drawer of granny squares because instead of throwing out my ends, I try to make one, a size of a granny square, even if it's like just the one round, usually I get up to three rounds. That's neither here nor there, but they're in a drawer ready to be a blanket at some point. <laughs> no, I've actually, I've noticed, I remember there was this lovely lady um, who who's not a designer anymore, I don't think. Uh, and she used to um, create granny squares and even if she only had a tiny little bit of yarn, even if she only had enough to do like two granny clusters, she'd use that bit up. So it could be a completely different colour in the middle of a round. But I always think that originally, that's really what granny squares were for. We really were using up all of our scraps and all of the stash that we've got. So I love the fact that you just, you don't throw anything away. You just create a little bit of a square and pop it in a drawer. That's lovely. <laughs> so one day you're going to have a really scrappy blanket. True. And I love scrappy blankets. Like if you look on my uh, website, I have a whole blog post um, last year. Well, several blog posts. We did a scrap busting cal. So the blog posts are still there. The cal is over, but there's a ton of different ideas of ways that you can use your scraps, rather, whether it's like carding them for stuffing amigurumi, crochet little animals, oh, to wow. the blanket, to designs where people have those fades in mind that you can use your scraps for as well. 
I love that. And that's genius to card them. So you just literally, you're pulling the, the threads apart of the, the plies apart, sort of fluffing it all up to make stuffing. That's fantastic. And I saw a really amazing thing where people were using dog and cat brushes as carters. Instead of buying the expensive carters, you can just use a, a, a pet brush. <laughs> that works. <laughs> I think we need to see that. I'll tell you what we will do. We'll ask Theo to make sure that we put a link to your blog in the comments so that everyone can go and have a look at that. And um, don't forget, everybody, you can check out all of Katie's amazing patterns on the Lovecross website. And we'll put a link into the comments, which will take you straight to Katie's collection of patterns because there are some amazing patterns not just these beautiful sonora desert ones but a sonora collection not sonora desert but that is a place isn't it in arizona the sonora collection we'll put a link in so everyone can see all your patterns not just the sonora collection have you got anything that you'd like to add before we before we finish up here today only that um if you found this useful and that if you would like to join another community project that the Datura Bloom Cal does start um, on August 3rd. So to join us on Instagram there um, for more of these sorts of chatty videos. <laughs> It'll be lovely. And yeah, that's a great point. Don't forget to join us for the August festival, the Love Cross Festival all the way through August. Lots of fantastic things to uh, follow along with and join in. Most excitingly, Katie's Cal. Obviously this is a beautiful top. Um, we'll pop a picture on so you can see it and a link to the pattern. It's a free pattern and you just need some cotton to make it with and it's gorgeous. What are the sizes, Katie, while I think about it? Will we just tell everybody what sizes does it go up to? So it's an oversized design and so it goes up to 2XL um, on the design. But if you just increase to like an air and weight cotton with a 5.5 hook, you can make it much bigger as well. Fantastic. So that's really great. If you've only got air and weight cotton in your stash you're still okay you're ready to go thank you so much katie um it's been gorgeous having you here on our lovecrafts channel and um, remember everybody if you like this and you want to see some more lives or you want to have a look at our wonderful tutorials subscribe to the love uh, to the um to the lovecrafts channel and uh and just keep an eye out for every single new video because there's loads coming katie the, the <laughs> And they're always free and they're wonderful. And we have such lovely designers come to join us, just like Katie from the Queen Stitch. Don't forget to have a look at the Queen Stitch and have a look at Katie's patterns. Katie, thank you so much for joining us. And um, we'll see you in August for the festival. Fabulous. And thank you so much for having me. And as an extra plug, August is my birthday month. So you don't want to let me down. <laughs> oh, you can't miss Katie's birthday. I think we'll just have to see if we can find a cake for you, Katie. I won't say no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, see you, everybody. Take